Good evening. Good evening. As we gather on the 33rd Sunday of Ordinary Time, the Mass intentions are especially for the repose of the souls of David Ratliff, Jan Hopkins, Thomas Rivard, Frank Kubiak, Barbara Szymanski, Francis Conway, Nadia Di Palermo, Jim Doherty, Kelly Trecca, Maureen Lavin, and Barbara De Simone. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Today's parable of the talents and courage encourages us to use our gifts for the good of others. For the times we have not done this, let us ask for mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you reveal the kingdom in parables. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to serve you with joy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. My almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the, the highest, highest, and on yeah. earth peace it's to people, people of goodwill. Good will. We, we praise you, you, we bless, bless you, you, we adore we you, we glorify, glorify you. you. 
we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good, not evil, all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways for you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home and your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord blessed you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light 
and children of the day. We are not of night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay awake and sober. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability then he went away. Immediately, the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibility. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I know you are a dem demanding person, harvesting where you do not plant, and gathering where you do not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvested where I did not plant and gather where I do not scatter. Should, not, should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For, everyone, for to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I'd like to start this evening with two things. First, a shout out to our volunteers this weekend. Um, this is going to be the busiest weekend since we've reopened. Uh, we had confessions this morning, followed by two weddings, uh, one at 1 o'clock and then another at 3 o'clock. And then now we're here at 5 o'clock mass. And I want to say that the welcoming party that's, was at three of those four events. So we can't do it without our wonderful volunteers to 
come in and welcome you to greet you and then have our cleaning crew come in to flip the church for the next event. The other thing is, I want you to be like the second servant in tonight's homil or in tonight's gospel. You know, he took two talents and created two more. As you're probably well aware, we're having the Reopen Our Doors to the Future campaign, where we have a generous donor who will match your donation dollar for dollar. So what better way to double your impact for the parish? Um, and the impetus behind this campaign is to upgrade our streaming capabilities. Because as you know, COVID's not going away. It didn't go away after the election. It's not going to go away after January 1st. And uh, we want to get all this equipment off the altar so we can have a better more fulfilling uh, worship experience. Um, you can see that we've already started the process back on the knee wall of the um, choir loft. Two of the permanently mounted cameras are up there. And those cameras have uh, 30 times capability. So you can pretty much see the sweat on Jesus's brow if it was, so up, it was up there. So, um, so it's a really important campaign and just a way to really help enhance our, our experience here at Mass. The Gospel accounts of last weekend, this weekend, and next weekend are from the 24th and 25th chapters of Matthew. The teachings presented in them by Christ are the, his last ones before he entered Jerusalem to be put to death. They are his final testament to his disciples, int intended to guide them and us in the already but not yet time. That time between his presence here on earth and his second coming at the end of the world. These teachings are therefore of great importance. And when you look closely at them, they are challenging, even disturbing. Last week's parable told us about the five wise and five foolish virgins. The foolish ones did not look ahead and make provisions for the coming of the bridegroom. They were guilty of the sin of presumption, presuming that in their lack of oil for their lamps, the wise ones would provide for them. Their even greater presumption was that once they finally arrived at the banquet, the bridegroom would let them in, along with the others who had been prepared. But they found the door slammed in their face. Today's parable is about a servant who lacked courage and who, being fear-driven, was consequently unproductive, excusing himself by accusing his master of being a demanding person. This servant, like the foolish virgins, was looking for an excuse. He was in a state of denial, denying his own responsibilities. Next weekend, we will be hearing about others who were do-nothings, who were unproductive, and who found themselves to be outside because, outsiders because they ignored all that God had given them. God has given us enormous, enormous treasures and talents. We have a powerful currency, the powers that God has given us. Christ is interested in productivity. He isn't looking for passive dependent people to follow him, to be his post-ascension agents here on earth. He wants gamblers and risk takers to be his followers to energize his church. Doesn't it strike you that the parables of Jesus center on farming, fishing, and business activities, all involving risk-taking? Remember the man who found the pearl of great price and then risked all his net worth to acquire it. Remember the fishing episodes when Jesus asked Peter to throw out his nets yet again, even though he had gone through the entire night without catching a single fish. And remember, too, the, episodes when, the episode when Jesus came upon the poor fig tree that produced, produced nothing, thereupon was go, and he thereupon was going to destroy it. But he held back when the landscaper asked if he could wait a year so he could fertilize it, tend it, and bring it to bear fruit. Christianity without courage is Christianity without blood and spirit. God encourages us to jump into life and run the risk of growing. It doesn't take, take courage to hide in fear. It takes courage to risk, some, to risk something new. All around us these days, we hear talk about our sluggish economy. Experts, pundits, and commentators incessantly present us tiny bits of evidence upon which they predict that our economy is turning around and will be roaring back in another year. 
Productivity's figures are banded about. What are our economists are what are our what are our economists all looking for? Risk takers. Go out and spend, they tell us. Invest, buy and get the currency changing hands again, they insist. I hope you also notice that they are asking us to have faith, to make faith based decisions, to act and to act boldly on faith. Christ is giving us the same challenge. He's telling us that faith, faith isn't something we can get and keep to, all to ourselves. Rather, it is the currency of the divine economy, the engine that drives it. And faith isn't something we can hide, clutch, and hold upon our, to ourselves. It needs to be invested in the lives of others and thereby, and thereby multiplied. Only then can we possibly bear fruit. Only then can our world get better. We were given the faith not simply to save our own skins, but to save the world. Turning the other cheek is a profound risk. It requires tremendous investment in self-confidence. So does forgiven 70 times 7. One takes a tremendous risk when one tells another, I love you. Assuming that the others, even when your adversaries are acting in good faith, requires a great expenditure of your spiritual capital, showing compassion and giving tender loving care to those who are anything but lovable, who are self-concerned and self-centered, requires an investment of your own risk capital. Having the courage to be openly Catholic is something that is personally demanding to each one of us here. It's not easy to stand up for priests, for good priests, and defend them in the face of the withering scorn directed at them and our church these days, especially by the culture despisers of religion as witnessed in the media. Coming to Mass, especially when it's not convenient, requires a risk, a risk, we, we must, a risk that must be made in order to increase your own spiritual productivity not the sort of productivity that benefits you, but that which is productive of good fruit in the lives of those around you. There's a lot of talk these days about accountability. Usually, the accountability must be made by others. Social media executives, business executives, Wall Street, and the Roman Catholic bishops. And I'm happy that they are being held accountable. But what about you? Do you, do we, what about us? Do we realize that we too will face our own day of judgment? That our own little world will one day come to an end? What about our own productivity and accountability? Are our decisions fear-based or faith-based? These Sundays bringing us to the end of the church year, these last Sundays bringing us to the end of the church year, they ought to challenge us and even disturb us. While it is true that Jesus is meek and mild, boundlessly compassionate and merciful, and that his, he loves us unconditionally, it is likewise true that he has great and high expectations for us. After all, God didn't create us to do nothing. It's what he created us for that ought to occupy our, ten, our attention, disturb our conscience, and prod us into spiritual productivity. I believe in one, one God, God Father, Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven, of heaven and, earth, and earth, all things, things visible, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, 
he came down from heaven and by the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. man. For, For our, our sake, sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in God's goodness, let us turn to the Lord in prayer. For God's holy church, may it recognize and welcome the talents of all the faithful in building up the body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, may they show a preferential option for the poor in implementing just economic systems. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a peaceful end to the violent conflicts and for healing for all who suffer in the tragic face of war, especially our brothers and sisters in Armenia and Azerbaijan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are particularly vulnerable to the pandemic and experience fear and anxiety, may they soon find peace of mind and spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are gathered here, may we offer our gifts of time, talent, and treasure in the service of others and of the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit may find comfort and be returned to health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died and those who mourn, may they be comforted by the promise of new life in Christ, especially Jean Marie Rhodes, sister-in-law of Jackie Flack, and J. Patrick Doherty, father of Dan Doherty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed parishioners whose names are listed in this week's bulletin, that they may rest in the eternal embrace of God who loves them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For David Ratliff, Jan Hopkins, Thomas Rivard, and Frank Kubiak, who are being remembered especially at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the, books in the, for the prayers in the Book of Intentions, for those who have asked for our prayers, and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of life and love, you call us to serve you joyfully with the gifts and talents we have received from you. Hear our prayers that we might dedicate our lives to the path of discipleship. Who has this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. the bread we offer fruit of the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you, and gave us the price of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundation of the world. You have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder. To rule your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you and joyfully celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 <coughs> holy Lord God, the God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim, proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread through the world and bring her the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honors yours for ever and ever. Amen.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as a way the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were sacramentally there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of these sacred mysteries, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. And there's one additional announcement on Thursday or on Tuesday morning at 8:30 mass. That mass will be offered up for the loved ones that have asked for their prayers for the repose of the souls of their family members or friends who have passed this pat or any time during this their lifetime. So um, that mass is again is on Tuesday at 8:30. There is a placard over by the candles that does highlight all the people that are on that list that was published in the bulletin this weekend and who will be remembered especially at this Mass. Thank you so much for this wonderful homily today and I think during this time when we have pandemic it's our opportunity to take risk opening ourselves, our hearts to others and to God. We have received everything from God, from His goodness. So let to be generous in responding to God's goodness, loving, caring for Him, not only family members, relatives, but also those who might be overlooked, forgotten, current difficult situation. Lord Jesus, may I always honor you both in my work here to be pastor in my rest and what I when I treat my parishioners fill me with your love keep me free from critical intolerant spirit and I may always seek to please you and bring good to my parishioners as well I wish you open your eyes open your heart open your souls and see how God loves us and share this love with each other. I wish you a wonderful weekend. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. <laughs>